Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, January 20th, 2023. As always, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share this video with others. Your likes, your shares, your comments is what keeps this channel going. So again, make a comment on and like this video, please. Today we have uh, pretty much a normal agenda. Stocks finished the uh, week on a relatively upbeat note. Uh, I think NASDAQ and small caps, especially small caps, are leading the stock market higher. This is good news in general for stock bulls. Uh, junk debt high yield bonds breakout seems to be looming very close. We're very close to a breakout. I will also talk about market breadth, which seems to have improved and is exhibiting a bullish divergence. We'll look at the dance of gold and dollar. And um, Ethereum, uh, as I'm recording this, seems to be breaking out into a new bull market. Uh, so we'll look at that and we'll think, uh, we'll try to see if Bitcoin could be next. If you are a subscriber, stay tuned. We have a relatively uh, packed uh, members on the video. Uh, we have uh, quite a bit of stocks, uh, QQQ trades, uh, another position has been opened. Um, there's a whole bunch of other ones like municipal bonds, utilities, Japan, Singapore, Costco, Alibaba, Baidu. Um, and there's a whole bunch of uh, gold related stocks as well, like Hecla. Agnico Eagle and Royal Gold. So if you're a subscriber, stay tuned. If you're not a subscriber, uh, hit the, and then continue to the uh, description of this video and uh, sign up for my newsletter. Okay, so S&P 500 on this chart, you can see uh, this is a candlestick chart. So, you know, I usually use candlesticks on this interface. First of all, this is an e tradingview.com interface. I had some questions. Uh, how do I get the same chart uh, on, how do I get similar charts on my uh, computer? So this is tradingview.com. You can open a free tradingview account and then you will have a similar chart on uh, for yourself. Uh, the security I'm using is ES1 exclamation point. This is S&P 500 continuous futures on this chart. You can see green, blue, red, and yellow lines. These are my uh, proprietary trading indicators, which you can have on your chart if you follow the link in the description of this video. Now, looking at this chart, uh, so up until relatively recently, uh, we were in a downtrend or a bear market. So throughout 2022, uh, in fact, we can see exactly when the bear market started and my indicators make it very easy. Um, once the security, in this case, S&P 500, closed below this yellow support resistance line on April 29th, 2022, this is my definition of a downtrend or a bear market. So at that point, we said, okay, that's it. Whereas there's no more uptrend, we will begin selling stock shorts, uh, selling the stocks short. Or you can also do nothing uh, during the bear market. Uh, there's also a saying um, if you have what's called a bear market project, such as go on vacation, stay in your deck, uh, catch up with your friends, do nothing. Uh, if you're more aggressive, then you can sell stocks short, which was what we were doing. We were selling them short. When do we sell short? We, once the bear market starts, which happened right there on April 29th, we need to wait for an opportunity. And an opportunity occurs when a, in a downtrend, stocks become overbought, quote unquote, overbought. They have become overextended to the upside and then a trigger occurred. So this is a trigger right there. So we had overextended condition. Uh, stocks moved above this red support resistance line and then closed below it. Indeed, this is what happened. We had a nice fall afterwards. There were several more opportunities like this. We had a big rally, if you remember, from uh, low from the June into uh, August. And then uh, in late August, we had in early September, we had a couple of opportunities to sell short, which were also quite successful. 
now here in October if you listen to my videos I pointed out this hammer candlestick right there on Thursday 13th of October hammer candlestick looks like a hammer it has a uh, green in this case uh, head of a hammer and a uh, tail at the bottom or a shadow at the bottom which looks like a handle of the hammer this just means that the stocks uh, pushed lower but were rejected uh, at the low levels and the bulls or people who think that stock market will continue higher have bought out this um, you know prices went higher basically and then from then on we did indeed get an quote unquote overbought condition because at this point we're still thinking yes we're still in a downtrend we're still in a bear market we need an overbought condition now i was already questioning this um, bear market in november right there on this candle november 10th of this of last year 2022 this is a giant green candle and it took out a whole bunch of stops that were hidden above this october highs and then yes indeed we became overbought and we reached this red support resistance line and we had indeed a whole bunch of signals you can see those downward facing arrows these are indeed signals to sell short in fact we had one just a few days ago or the yesterday literally uh, Thursday uh, the 19th of January of this year and all of them seemed mm, questionable to me now if we blindly follow the system blindly follow the algorithm we should have been selling short so we should be building this huge enormous short position at this point but um, based purely on experience and reading of candlesticks and you can see there's some reading of candlesticks required um, it's not complicated but like for example this hammer candlestick is pretty much obvious this gigantic green candle is pretty obvious um so re based on reading of those candles i was like i just not sure i like this setup so uh, that's why i kept asking is this a bear trap is this a bear trap is this... so latest uh, right there yesterday uh, also is this a bear trap it it doesn't look like i want to i don't want to be selling short here p based on pure experience so another reason why I'm, I'm reluctant to sell short is because we have um, bullish levels or basically uh, levels at which point um, we say okay that's it there is no more uh, downtrend there is no more bear market there is now a new uptrend a new bull market and this bull market is super close it's less than six percent away so according to my system the new bull market will start when s p 500 closes above this level at 4207 which is about five and a half percent away it's not a far it's not really far and additionally we have um parts of the market that are already in the in that uh, uptrend so let me show you dow jones um this is symbol uh y m one exclamation point this is dow jones dow jones futures you can use other ones as well but this is just very convenient so dow jones uh, actually entered a new bull market right there um on friday 11th of november all you can say maybe a little bit later somewhere around um, mid-november by closing above this blue support resistance line which was at that time at 33,758 and that was another reason why i'm reluctant to sell short stocks is because why would uh you know if one part of the market like s p 500 is not in an uptrend and dow jones is in an uptrend uh you know dow jones is 30 very large stocks and they're important stocks so they're like generals you know they're generals leading leading the army um, forward so if the generals are indeed attacking then why can't the privates and the soldiers and lieutenants um, not do the same thing so this is the reason why i'm i was very reluctant to sell short and the reason why i'm questioning uh latest uh, short signals um now 
up up arrows means this is a good place to be buying and literally yet today we had another signal so uh, an up up signal or a buy signal occurs when a security is already above this blue support resistance line and then came down towards it and so we just had that exact um, occurrence we had a, a low uh, that was made below this blue line and then a close above that occurred today so another buy signal if anything for Dow Jones so we're looking at this uh, security and I am I am again reluctant to sell short so let's see again um, what other parts of the market are doing so here is another part of the market uh, it is Nasdaq so Nasdaq is was um, under severe pressure in fact it, I think the, uh, the uh, what they call it, the downtrend for Nasdaq started even earlier in March of 2022 whereas for S&P 500 it started in April of 2022 so notice again downward facing arrows for example was a great opportunity here in April of last year it collapsed afterwards so if you if you shorted it there you, you made huge money basically Another great opportunities were here in August uh, and late August of 2022. Again, you had very nice opportunity and, and it indeed went to new lows and you made huge money here if you if you shorted. Now, because of the correlation between the various uh, stock indices, uh, generally speaking, stocks move together in the same direction as other stocks. So Nasdaq's, NASDAQ is a stock uh, index and S&P 500 and Dow Jones are also stock indices so yes Nasdaq is badly underperforming however it is still correlated it is still highly correlated so the shape of this curve is about the same additionally notice that the indicators are kind of curving down and they're uh, also getting close to the price action we can also project the uh, indicator action into the future but there is not much uh, difference or rather not much change that we're projecting into April, um, into March, April. So this level for NASDAQ uh, to be watching, um, the bull market for NASDAQ, so to speak, the beginning of a new uptrend is at 13,474. I'm reading it right off the chart. Now, there is an important resistance level that's coming up, which is at 12,278. It's about, I don't know how much percent we can see how much. It's about um, four or five percent or so away. So it's not that far for NASDAQ. Um, and what I'm hearing uh, is that we, we're hearing a lot of uh, technology companies laying off workers. Now, uh, you can look at it from a point of view of uh, the sky is falling, the recession is about to hit us. Uh, you can also uh, look at it from a point of view of the bottom line for the company. And the bottom line for the company is that they have too many workers, so they're cutting them down. That does not mean they're not profitable. They're still turning a very good profit. So uh, the stock market seems to be liking this, uh, like, liking those cuts. And at the very least, you can see uh, a move higher today. And many of the stocks that are mentioned, like actually wanted to look up Google um, because literally today um, we had announcement of job cuts and notice what happened today with stock gapped higher and continued higher and Google is a huge member of Nasdaq so it's important for it to uh, be profitable they are making money uh, they are projected also to make good money Looking at Russell 2000 small caps index, uh, this one is uh, also quite strong, surprisingly. Uh, so whereas uh, the Dow Jones already is above this blue support resistance line, like I already showed you, I'll show you very quickly again. Notice it's already above the blue support resistance line, meaning that it's already in an uptrend, already in a bull market. The Russell 2000 is super close to a bull market it's four percent away notice how close we are to this blue support resistance line this little uh, faint white lines were just my projections that i uh, put in here at the late in late november and um, 
<laughs> this one, this projection seemed to be, I mean, I nailed it basically. So we're approaching this level uh, for, for Russell 2000 at 1951. We can project the, uh, the indication to the future. Not much change again uh, up until April. There is a little bit of a dip, in, you know, downwards, but which is a good thing because um, the price action is coming closer to uh, this bullish levels, the blue support resistance line. So overall, not a bad looking chart. So we're, we saw a breakout above this red line, which is uh, resistance or where would we could consider selling it short. We saw a breakout above it, it came down towards it um, last two days and then surged off of it. So generally speaking, it's a pretty good sign. Another pretty good sign for the stock market is the fact that high yield bonds, these are high yield bonds, uh, ticker symbol uh, J and K. Uh, now, Notice down here it says data adjusted for dividends. And notice down here it says ADJ. That means you can adjust it for dividends or not adjust it for dividends. So currently it is adjusted for dividends. If I click it, it will not adjust it for dividends. And so notice that the price is actually currently below the red line. Um, I, I want to adjust it for dividends because the uh, junk debt actually pays out huge amounts of dividends, so we want to consider that when we're looking at price action. So what's important on this chart is the fact that uh, high yield bonds are within a striking distance of a new uptrend. Uh, it's it's 1.6 percent away. If we project the price action to the future, uh, it's already above it. So we're already above projected levels that were going to be in early March, which gives me great hope um, that, I mean, from a macroeconomic point and macro political point, I also look at the situation in Ukraine today. We had a, a very, very good news for Ukraine. Um, the NATO, uh, well, the uh, member uh, member countries of the Rammstein uh, conference, which I think was around 50 countries, are pledging huge amounts of weapons uh, in this fight with the uh, fascist Russian state. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, this um, pledge, these pledges will come to fruition and Ukraine will succeed in driving out the Russian Federation out of its lands. Now, Coming back to high yield bonds, uh, why do I care about high yield bonds? I have shown this in the past, I'll show it quickly again. If we look at a weekly chart of high yield bonds, this is JNK, uh, down below here we have what's called correlation coefficient. So correlation means how closely do, uh, how closely does one stock follow the other stock. And the more positive this correlation coefficient is, the better uh, there is, um, the better they follow one another. In this case, you can see that it's a pretty close correlation. So whatever high yield bonds do, S&P 500 does pretty much the same thing. Of course, not always. Occasionally there is, you know, they're doing something different. But currently in 86% of the times, they're doing the same thing. So good news high yield bonds seem to be leading stocks higher. Um, high yield bonds are also considered, uh, well, let me put it this way, uh, smart money seems to be trading high yield bonds. Uh, so if smart money is buying high yield bonds, then shouldn't we follow smart money? So I think it's a good idea to look at what smart money is doing. Smart money seems to be liking high yield bonds. Now, over the past couple of days, yes, we had, first of all, we had a huge run. I mean, from this bottom here, from 28th of December, it was basically nonstop gains, like 11, 12 sessions. Yes, we tapped out right there. I was really hoping we'll just break out above this blue line and be done with it. But no, we came kind of close to it and then pulled off. So from uh, 18th of January till uh, 19th of January, from Wednesday to Thursday of this week, we saw a gap down, a very scary looking 
gap. Yes, absolutely. However, today this is another example of a you know decent looking hammer candlestick. So hammer candlesticks again occur when uh, prices come down, and but then uh, the, the people who think that the stock market will continue higher buy out um, the security and move the stock, uh, move the price higher. So this looks uh, like a decent looking hammer candlestick. So this gap most likely will get filled uh, on Monday probably or next week, sometime next week. Hopefully, again, we'll just break out above this blue line. This would be a big uh, boost uh, to the confidence of stock bulls. Uh, because at this point we have multiple signals, multiple signs that um, bull, bulls or people who think that are traders or investors who think that stock market will generally continue higher will predominate. Because right now we have the Dow Jones already in an uptrend. We have S&P 500 approaching. Um, Nasdaq is pretty far off still. The small cap Russell 2000 is super close. And again, if we have the uh, high yield bonds, the junk debt investors uh, thinking that bull market is about to start again, then it will give uh, confidence to many investors to just go ahead and buy stocks. Okay, so looking at another parameter uh, that we can look at uh, for the stock market. This is um, New York Stock Exchange composite advances minus decline volume line. Okay, it's a handful or a mouthful. You can find out more about it by going to stockcharts.com where I'm hovering, click on chart school, and then search for advanced decline. And it's, it's an actual... Um, you know, parameter. There, it's a mathematical formula of how to calculate this line. Uh, make sure you change it to cumulative. So this is where I'm hovering. It says cumulative. Okay, in the upper. So this is the upper part of this graph. Is the cumulative advanced decline volume line. Down below here is S&P 500 for comparison's sake. So looking at this chart, we see that today. On Friday we made a higher high than the previous um, peak on um, in, in early September uh, while the S&P 500 hasn't yet made a higher high okay so we have what's called a bullish divergence generally speaking bullish divergences are great uh, what this means in very uh, you know sp general terms is means that there is um, more stocks are pushing higher just a number of stocks a number of or amount of volume of those stocks traded is pushing higher but the price hasn't yet caught up with the uh, push higher so again this is very good sign ideally we should break you know even higher next week or maybe next few weeks uh, but this is pretty good already so good news uh, also uh, from the New York Stock Exchange composite. Notice also the New York Stock Exchange composite also broke out above this blue support resistance line. So um, I don't normally follow an, you know, NYSE composite because it's not exactly a tradable instrument. There used to be one, but there is not one anymore. However, uh, notice that NYSE was also in a downtrend. Um, and the downtrend started back in there. Uh, the downtrend started right there in April of last year. So it pretty much follows uh, S&P 500. It, it correlates highly to one another. So good news. NYSE also is breaking out into a new uptrend. All right, switching gears a little bit, I promised to show you the dance of dollar and gold so dollar and gold um they, they they move opposite more or less to a degree not always but vast majority of the time when dollar moves up gold moves down when gold moves up dollar moves down so we have i'm gonna go to weekly chart for a, a little bit um this is dollar index dxy on the weekly chart Notice the breakout back here in July of 2021. And again, a gigantic move for the dollar. 
uh, I believe those are multi-decade highs. And in fact, Euro uh, and British pound hit an all-time low against the dollar, and the Euro hit a multi-decade uh, low against the dollar. However, it seemed like we are, well, back in September, I was mentioning that we have most likely topped. Then we had this big, this is a weekly candle here in November, big red candle. And then finally, uh, this week we see a uh, beginning of a new downtrend, or the last week we saw a beginning of a new downtrend for the dollar. So yes, there is a possibility the dollar could, you know, rally a little bit, but general direction has shifted. I think we have now entered a bear market for the dollar. So a bear market for the dollar, there's the new downtrend for the dollar beginning on Thursday, 12th of January of this year. This means that um, dollar most likely will start making lower lows and lower highs. So lower lows and lower highs or weaker dollar is excellent for gold. Notice what's happening with gold. Um, now, I want to again show this uh, weekly chart of gold. And I wanted to show you this to point out this action here. I'm going to actually turn off the indicators for a second. So this action right there where I'm hovering. <coughs> Um, around October, November of last year. So this is a, if you ever want to study the stock market, this is an excellent example of a triple bottom. We have one, this is a weekly chart. So each candlestick is a week's worth of activity. So right there, weekly candle for Monday, um, for the 26th of September, weekly candle for the 17th of October, weekly candle for 31st of October. They have what's called a shadows at the bottom here. That means the prices came down, but but then uh, bulls came in and rallied the prices higher. Again, prices came down, but the uh, people who think the stock, stock will continue higher rallied. The same thing happened here in uh, October, late October of last year. So triple bottom. Um, now, Yes, we can also use reading the candlesticks. You can also, I usually just use my lines. Uh, so these lines, I was looking at this triple bottom and, and just the way this action was, um, notice how perfect uh, the price came up to the red line right there on uh, 15th, 16th of November and then bounced off of it. And I was like, this just doesn't look like it's done. Yes, again, we rallied above it with a strong candlestick. First time we closed above it in a long time, above this red sport resistance line. Again, we closed below it. So several attempts uh, by the bears all failed, and then we just continued higher until we took out all of the stops that were above this uh, previous highs. And uh, finally, we have closed above this blue support resistance line on uh, 16th, sorry, 13th of uh, January, uh, Friday the 13th, last Friday. And this is a new bull market for gold. In other words, I think that uh, now uh, gold, you know, this, the road is open towards new highs. So we can actually look at new highs and where is this all going. Uh, I'm going to go to monthly, monthly chart. So, okay, so this is a monthly chart of gold. Monthly just means that each candlestick is one month worth of activity. So this is a, a bullish pattern, a bullish continuation pattern. Of, you know, this is a giant. You have to think about this is a multi-year, several years of, uh, you know, stock action. Um, I mean, we have an enormous structure here that began uh, in in September of 2011 with a bottom here in uh, 2015 and uh, multiple highs here. So, I mean, this is huge. This is like a, a 
thousand points right here but I'm more interested in this latest pattern and this is the pattern I'm more interested in so we have a big move higher and then this consolidation from uh, 2000 July 2000 until now okay, I'm gonna zoom in on it again so this could be thought as a potential uh, cup and handle so I'm gonna try to draw it this is a, a cup and this is a handle which is incomplete still if it gets complete it will look like that and at that point we will have a cup and handle that is you know ready to be uh, replicated on the upside so the depth of this pattern is I'm gonna try to measure it. I think I already pointed this out last week but let's just pretend that that is gonna be our target so we're looking at about 23 percent depth of this uh, structure if we project the same structure into the future into you know up basically so we're looking somewhere around 2500 for the target for gold so if this is uh, gonna happen the way it's happened uh, the way I'm projecting so gold needs to continue towards about 2000 and break above this uh, previous highs currently we're at 1926 so 2000 is you know not that far off we're, we're like right there basically so um, yeah we could see a pretty sizable move for for gold um, into the future and this is why the reason why we are indeed very interested in gold miners so notice that we have several gold miners that we're actually already trading b2 gold hecla mining agnico eagle mines and royal gold so we are already interested in those and we're already taking positions in them because we're anticipating that yes we can see a pretty sizable move for gold if i'm correct and then once again if uh, dollar dollar has indeed entered the new downtrend dollar should continue lower and that would definitely help gold so we, we might see some pretty interesting action in the new in the next few uh, weeks to month um, all right so switching gears into <laughs> completely wild um, uh, I don't know universe of Bitcoin and various cryptocurrencies this is ethereum and um, as we speak this is ethereum on daily chart so each candlestick is a day's worth of activity notice the way the indicators curve down we're currently right at this level where ethereum is attempting to break out above this uh, blue support resistance line into a potential new uptrend so an uptrend for ethereum is a close above 1657 i'm reading it right of the chart at that point um, we will switch our thinking and we'll think okay now that ethereum has closed above this level we should not be selling it short we should be thinking about buying it so because of the correlations between um, various uh, cryptocurrencies it, it only makes sense that once ethereum breaks out bitcoin you know could easily follow now if you listen to my previous videos i was extremely bearish on bitcoin i at, at multiple occasions i thought that we're gonna go negative on bitcoin we sold uh, bitcoin short on multiple occasions very successfully latest occasion when we sold it short was in april of last year with a 61 percent gain so if you open the position congratulations but now things have changed and we cannot be married to the same opinion you see what i'm trying to tell you for a trader you need to be very flexible um, so right now the way indicators are acting the way my indicators are showing i'm also going to project them into the future so notice what's happening the indicators will come down closer to price action very you know 
all, in fact, we're already above future projected action in, in February here. February is already um, below the current price action. So the the breakout could be looming for uh, Bitcoin. At that point, we'll, we could see a, a new bull run for Bitcoin. And you know how it is with Bitcoin. It could be, uh, you know, huge. <laughs> Have you seen, remember how they they it moved from um, like ten thousand to like sixty thousand? Okay, so again we traded that as well. So yes, we are looking at Bitcoin as well, um, and let's see if it breaks out. Uh, currently, the magic number is twenty six thousand, but in in the future this could actually be lower um, in in February. So let's see where this goes but it does make sense uh, for uh, ethereum to be moving higher uh, together with bitcoin so because of the high degree of correlation all right um that's it for this week's recap quite a big recap over 30 minutes uh make sure to uh, make a comment if you like this video make a comment if you like this video hit the like button uh, of course, don't forget to subscribe to this video and also turn on the notifi notification uh, if you um, want to hear my videos in the future. Uh, head over to mastercharstrading.com, click on sign up, sign up one of the products. So I have trading indicators, newsletters, and a combination of trading indicators and newsletters. Trading indicators are these lines on the chart. You can have them on your chart. It will greatly simplify your life as a trader because you know what to do you are you're going to be buying you're going to be selling at what level you're going to be buying or selling uh, newsletters is um, i send out daily alerts uh, on various securities and weekly uh, members only video so in this weekly members only video we'll cover all of this bunch of stocks you can see there's a whole bunch of them including some gold related stocks as well of course, the best deal is to get both indicators and newsletters. That's $59.95 per month is the best deal. So head over to mastercharstrading.com and sign up. That's it for this week's recap. Thank you for watching. Have another great trading week. Bye-bye.